where the Sheboygan North Golden Raiders 1-0 coming into this ball game are going to get ready to take on the Port Washington Pirates. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin and joining me is the coach, Chris Wright. And Chris, we got an interesting matchup, not because of the diversity of the two teams, but because of the similarities of uh, offense. Yes, both teams are going to run, run the football today, Marty. Both teams coming in, in at 1-0. Uh, last week, Port Washington defeated uh, Plymouth who's uh, picked to uh, do very well in the EWC. And then you have uh, Sheboygan North that went over to West Bend West and ran a fake extra point for, for a two-point conversion and, and ended up winning the game 29 to 28. Probably the big surprise of the ball game was uh, Sheboygan North getting Santos Medina going in the running game and uh, not throwing the ball as much. Uh, North arguably has probably the best receiver in the conference in Brian Herman. Yeah, no question about that. Special athlete Brian Herman. He took the opening kickoff back last week for, for a touchdown. But yes, they do want to run the ball this year. And Santos Medina, especially the second half of the year, really took off and uh, carried the ball quite well, especially against uh, Manitowoc and Preble. And uh, carried it over last week going 156 yards. Interesting situation with Port Washington as we uh, watch the mill on the sidelines. They have a, a young man by the name of Phil Bonavicini who has leukemia, Chris, and they've dedicated their season to uh, that young man. And uh, you might notice on the back of their, uh, in, on their inside jersey, if uh, you get a look at it, of number 22, that's in, in uh, memorial to uh, Phil Bonavicini. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the defense because uh, as we look at the starting lineups, North has quite a few two-way players, as does Port Washington. Yeah, something, uh, I was thinking the same thing. How does he wear and tear for that? So we'll see how that goes. I think we're going to have the National Anthem all here, Mary, Marty. All right, we're going to sign off. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the kickoff for tonight's ball game. I love the challenge of computers. Not that I have much time with these little guys and my job, but when my wife went back to school, I thought, why can't I? Certain things in life demand my attention, but a new career in computer science deserves my attention. An evening class at Lakeland doesn't tie my life in knots, thanks to a flexible, easy to manage schedule that allows me to balance work, school, and the twins. Evening classes that meet once a week, that's the easy part. Americans are rolling up their sleeves to help each other. Showing true strength of character and kindness and compassion. Spirit and enthusiasm. Together, we make America strong. Find out how you can serve, no matter where you are in life, at nationalservice.org. It's your world. It's your chance to make it better. Apply online at nationalservice.org and answer the president's call to service. through the starting lineup on offense for the Golden Raiders. At quarterback will be number four, Craig Kutz. Nate Pitch, number 15, will be a wide receiver. Number 20, Santos Medina will be the tailback. He'll be doing most of the ball carrying tonight. At fullback is Tyler Gutchow, number 44. At right guard is Peter Reschke, number 53. At right tackle is TJ Engels, number 66. At left tackle is number 70, Andy Eirich. At center is Nick Reschke, number 72. At left guard is Sean McGee, number 77. At tight end, number 88, Peter Priggy. And the other wide out is number 82, Brian Herman. 
Herman also returns uh, kickoffs and uh, had a 92 yarder last week, Chris, that uh, really helped spark the uh, Raiders to their win. And uh, joining Herman back deep to receive this first kickoff is uh, Nate Pitch. There you see uh, Dean Tudis, the head coach for the uh, Golden Raiders. A year ago, Port Washington came in here and, or excuse me, went north, went down to Port Washington and they uh, beat the Golden Raiders 30 to 13, but because of using an ineligible player, North got the win. Head coach for uh, Port Washington is Tim Greish. And uh, we wanna thank uh, Tim Greish and Todd Tudis for their help in getting the starting lineups and uh, giving us some background information prior to the game. I was just informed that we will not have a instant replay tonight either, so. Hopefully, we'll get all the kinks worked out by next week. Well, it looks like Brian has his field camera working. That's why we didn't do our opening from down on the track. Uh, some quick work by uh, Steve Reinert. And uh, Scott Miloff got that uh, ironed out. There's a shot from Brian's camera right there. He's a yep. good one. He's really worked hard the last few years to uh, get some real neat pictures. And if you're the first time watching us, You'll see just uh, some of those pictures that Brian will show us. He gets right down on the field, and uh, as long as he doesn't get taken out. I think Brian's on his, starting his 12th year. He's got one year up on me. Well, he looks better than you. Well, <laughs> he may can't argue with that. <laughs> Bob Wood getting set to uh, kick off. Relatively warm night tonight, Marty. Beautiful night for a ball game. It was about 78 degrees when I uh, drove over, and it's a pretty clear night. Pitch has it. Takes it across the uh, 20, right at the 25. He's hit and dropped. It'll be first and 10 for North. Interesting little setup. They wanted to come right, and obviously Port is going to do whatever they can to avoid kicking it to Brian Herman. So they kicked it to... Uh, to uh, pitch over there on the far side, and he just decided to run straight that way and uh, didn't fool any of the Port Pirates as they stayed in their lanes, and uh, Nate got out to about the 25, so that's not so bad. Did the right thing too, Coach. Instead of trying to get to the wall, he took it right up, right up the field. Cuts is at quarterback. Medina is a deep back. First and 10 north on the 24-yard line. Cuts straight drop. Throws it out, incomplete. Attempting to get it to Herman. Well, just as we learned, they're gonna establish the run. They uh, throw on first down. <laughs> Which is a nice safe pass though for Craig. Get his feet wet. Second down and 10. Port has a really good tradition, Chris, uh, in their football program and uh, they're always a uh, tough competition. Yeah, we've seen them a couple years ago, and we've mentioned that. They've been a powerhouse for a long, long time, and they play in a good conference in North Shore. Medina right up the middle. He gets it off tackle and heads up to the 30-yard line before he's hit and dropped. Push back. About a six-yard pickup. They play in that North Shore conference. That They have Homestead, who's been in the top five in state Division I for a number of years, and Germantown, who plays Division II. They're a big power as well. What makes you know, or what gives you an indication that they're a good team is they beat Plymouth last week. Plymouth has uh, got an outstanding outfit. Split backfield for the Raiders, cuts under center. Offside. And uh, Port defensive lineman jumped offside. That'll give North a quick five yards and it should be a first down. Well, we went to the South game last week, and I'll tell you, it took them forever to uh, decipher uh, penalties and uh, how are they yep. going to, you know, do things. And uh, we're certainly not having a quick start here on a simple five-yard walk-off. I think that's Al Dembor walking it off, isn't it? It looks like Al. Could be the, you know, some of these guys here. Ball is spotted on the 35-yard line. First and 10 north. Some of these guys work uh, baseball with you guys, yeah. Marty. Wide outs left and right for the Raiders. 
Inside handoff to Medina, he's hit at the line of scrimmage, drags tacklers forward, picks up maybe a yard. Well, Santos is a uh, hard work, her worker in the weight room. See him up there all the time working, pumping iron. You really hit the nail on the head when you talked about his, uh, you know, progress last season, the last few games, and boy, you picked up right where he left off in that first game at West Bend. Herman split out wide right, pitch is wide left, cuts under center. Medina and Gutchow in the backfield. Stop and go. Stop and go. Herman comes back, has it in his hands, but he can't hang on. He was slipping as he was trying to make the catch. Good move. He was open and a nice throw by Craig Kutz. Yeah, I was a little confused there. I wasn't sure if he was going to kind of lob it for a pass or kind of threw it on the line there. You know, sometimes on a, you know, a down and go. Yeah, you want to lob it up over, over the defensive. Top. But what he did is kind of threw it right in between the seam, which was a good pass. Uh, Brian did have to kind of come back a little bit for it, and uh, fortunately didn't get a handle on it. Peter Priggy's at tight end on the right side. Herman is split out wide right. Quick count. Herman. Well, they wanted to set up a screen to Gutschow, and leading the blocking for North was going to be T.J. Engels. They could almost got him for a penalty for being yeah. downfield on a pass. No flag was thrown. It's going to be fourth down. Didn't seem correct. Lucky he didn't get a penalty like that because uh, he was way downfield. I think they wanted a short drop there and Gutschow kind of took off. Boy, just nine passes a week ago, but already nine or 10, but now what, three already? Three, four passes, 0 for four. Yeah, I thought they had nine last week. Eric Klein's your punter. Johnny Luntzer is back deep. He's the quarterback, calls for a fair catch and makes it right on the 30. Check that, Dan Baronic making that uh, fair catch. It's gonna be first and 10 for Port. I think they're gonna spot it maybe on the 30 or the 31, we'll have to take a look. It'll be first and 10 either way. An interesting bit of pronunciation here, you got Mia Ham and Paul Hom. they both spell their last name the same. Well, there's a Lancer on the south side who's a relative of uh, this Luntzer. <laughs> is how they spell it. Johnny Luntzer, he's the quarterback, number 10. Spelled with an A, a though, right? Spelled exactly the same, but they pronounce it Luntzer. But on the south side, they call him Lancer. Yep, and he caught a touchdown pass. We do know that last week. Yeah, little Andre couldn't keep him quiet in class today. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 ball on the 31. Inside handoff to uh, Chrysler. And he Chugs up for a couple. Chrysler goes for two. That's the sophomore, Marty. They got some young guys on their ball club and uh, that bodes well for that program. I see they have a uh, sophomore on there, but I don't think he's gonna play too much, or freshman, pardon me, but he's not gonna play too much. Luntzer on a pitch out. Good pursuit by the Raiders and dropped. TJ Ingles. Ingles making good pursuit and nails Dan Helm for a loss. Well, TJ's another one of those workout guys, weight room type guys, and he's really increased his speed over the last year. You can see it playing as a sophomore, now moving up as a junior. He really pursued quickly there. It's gonna be third down and 10. Uh, give credit to Peter Priggy because he kept the uh, blocking back tied up that allowed Ingles to uh, fight through and uh, have good pursuit. So good job by Priggy in the front. Fake, Luntzer rolling, he's gonna get dragged down. I believe that was Ingles making the first stop. TJ Ingles with the sack. Him and Herman and Priggy, whole bunch of guys right in there. That didn't fool anybody, that, that fake. Loss of 12. You know, the way that's set up, that's almost one of those things you maybe see on film. And you tell your players during the week, they like to run this fake and roll out, and you tell your guys this is what you need to look for. And right there, it didn't fool the Golden Raiders, that's for sure. 
Back deep is uh, Herman and pitch. Good rush, blocked. Getting the block was number 32 and picking it up. Nate Kautzer on the block and picking it up in the air was Dave Moss and returning it down near the 10 yard line. Well, I went and to we were told earlier the replay machine is not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, just gonna say last night, unfortunately I saw the North JVs get their punts blocked three times. And here to start the varsity game, North comes out and finds a little seam and a big block and a golden opportunity for North to score. First down and 10, just outside the 10, I believe they have both uh, yard markers up. Fake handoff to Medina, little flip out to the side to Gutschow, and again the pass is incomplete and uh, Craig Cutts not having a good start. No, and he was wide open there and just lead him a little bit and there's no question, especially the way uh, you know, Priggy took the uh, corner man out there. There was nobody there. And, Puts uh, 0 for 4 to start the game, Chris. Brian Herman is wide right, pitches wide left. Gutschel is the up back, Medina is the deep back, Kutz is at quarterback. Inside hand off to Gutschel, he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Gets maybe a yard or two, but not much. A solid two yards for Gutschel. He's gonna make it third down and eight. Again, wide receivers left and right for the Raiders. It's third down. Cuts barking the signals. Fakes the handoff, and he's going to be hit and dropped and sacked by P.J. Gantner. Good rush by Gantner, and he got on top of Cuts and prevented the pass. So it's a sack. And North is pushed back. They're going to try a the field. Ten. I think they're going to try a field goal. At first, Cuts thought maybe they... Uh, might go for it here, but they're gonna, Eric Klein's going to have to try a field goal here. Looks like it's gonna be about a 27 yarder, Marty. Klein's got a good leg. Kutz will be doing the holding. They faked out of this formation to go for a, a two point conversion after a touchdown. That's what gave them the 29-28 win. Kick is low, but it gets over the crossbar and it's good. Eric Klein with the field goal in North at the 6.37 mark of the first quarter, leads it three to nothing. Having twins can be a handful. Buy one, get one free. So when I decided to go back to school, I needed to find one that fit my our lifestyle. Lakeland College was the perfect place. They offer an easy to manage schedule and counselors to help me anytime. Evening classes at Lakeland don't tie my <laughs> our life in knots. Ever consider a double major? Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Oh! Environmental Defense, get green. Eric Klein, after nailing that 27-yard uh, field goal, is getting ready to kick off, and there you get a good look at uh, Sean McGee, one of the stalwarts on the offensive line. Back deep for Port is Dan Baronic, number 20, and Dan Helm, number five. Finds kick carries back to the 10, taken by Helm. And he's hit and dropped outside the 25 yard line. Tackle being made by number 52, Alex Hinsey. <clears throat> well, I don't know if people know this, but some do that Eric Klein is Snipe Van Vagel's grandson. Snipe, of course, a long time physical education teacher and coach here in the district, also track starter and official and 
you name it. Uh, I think he's been involved as a starter for Sports Day since its inception back in 1896. <laughs> Inside handoff, ripping off yardages, Brandon Warner. A pretty good chunk there. Gutschow holds on there. You're right, that was a good run right through the middle there. Strong legs to be kicked through Pick, there, yeah. running hard. Pick up a seven yards, makes it second down and three. There's a good shot at TJ Angles. Again, off tackle and barreling forward, getting a good block was Dave Bishop. I didn't catch who the ball carrier was. Chris was at number eight. No, it wouldn't have been Wood. He's at end. I think it was number one again. Well, Preisler, number 12, carried that ball. And he got the first down. Ball was spotted at the 38-yard line. Pick up a six. Luntzer. Inside handoff, hit right at the point of attack. Was the port ball carrier. Well, the old wing T, Marty, and everybody's got to have responsibility. You got three backs that you got to worry about, and uh, that was Dan Helm picking up one yard. A good defensive stand that time by the Raiders. They caught him right at the uh, point of attack. I was just going to say, you just can't be fooled by uh, counters and different things like that. You just Got to play it straight. Oh, busting off a big gainer before he's ripped down is Brandon Warner. KT's in the building. KT's in the house. <laughs> we missed him at basketball today. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Guy dominates. <laughs> the, uh, again, hard run there for Warner. He really gets those legs real high. Kind of you want people running backs to kind of run low and drive, but boy, he really pumps those legs nice and high. Makes it difficult to tackle. That was a 20 yard pickup. Luntzer trying to keg it, but a uh, good defense being played on the outside, push the uh, blocker, Nick Newland back into the backfield and left Luntzer with nowhere to go. Well, that time they had about eight or nine guys in the box, Marty, and what we mean by that is they kind of have a press defense and they really fill the gaps and the holes, and uh, there was nowhere for uh, Luncer. Luncer to run at all. Ball what? spotted on the 39, it's second down and eight. I keep wanting to say Lancer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Full house backfield. Trying to make a cutback, but being hit in the backfield Ooh. with Mike Preisler. That he got bailed over, those legs went back. Ouch. Off the bottom of the pile, his angles on top of the pile was uh, Herman. Loss of a yard that time by Preisler. Oh, how about a big stand here? Third and eight. It's third down. for Port. Deep back for uh, North is Andrew Priggy, free safety. Luntzer with the handoff inside. Not much of a pickup, not nearly enough for a first down. Kind of an interesting call there, Chris. Taking the inside handoff was Brandon Werner, but he didn't get much, only about two or three yards. Well, he's been getting all the yards, so they thought they'd uh Give it to him again. But uh, this time the Raiders held fast. It's gonna force a fourth down here. Looks like Port's uncertain with what they wish to do. I know the scoreboard says fourth and four, but it's I think it's a little longer than that. It's about six or seven yards, actually. They're gonna go for it, Marty. Field position, big if you stop them here. It certainly is. They got wide receivers left and right. Luntzer almost fumbled a handoff, but he got it no to his running back, but Warner not getting nearly enough, and North makes the stand. Well, I'm gonna give credit to who's ever running the, sh the uh, clock because they got their four yards, Marty. 
Too bad uh, that's what the uh, board said, but I'll tell you what, it was about six or seven, and that's why they fell two or three yards short. Good stop there for North. A bend but don't break D there. They gave up some chunks of yards, but when it counted, turned the ball over, and they have good field position here. 65 yards away from Paydirt. And uh, in the offset eye, Gutschall split just a little bit behind the uh, right tackle. Santos Medina is a deep back. Inside handoff, Medina tries to cut it back. He gets uh, three or four yards on the pickup. Depends where they spot it. It's gonna be second down. Give him four yards, nice pickup by Medina. Again, Herman and Pitch split out, right and left. Kutz still under center, looking to make his first completion of the night. Fakes the handoff to Medina. Nice play. Priggy's got the catch, but I think he's gonna be just short of the first down. Kutz to Priggy. First completion, that was a nice one too. He's wide open. Just came nice across the middle of the seam there, right between the uh, defensive backs and kind of behind the linebackers there. And Found a nice seam and pass, and when you got guys like Brian Herman and Nate Pitch with all that speed, you're gonna pull those D-backs back a little bit with that, should create some seams in the middle, and that's what uh, third happened down. there for North. Yeah, third down and one. Inside handoff, Medina, he's hit in the backfield and pushed back a great stand by Port Washington. Wow. You have to think North felt pretty comfortable with a third and one giving it to Medina, but I'll tell you, Port was really uh, up to the challenge that time. You're gonna, uh, you gotta punt the football. But they're not, they're gonna go for it. Oh boy. Fourth down and three in their own territory. I don't know if I like this coach. Well, if they make it, it's a good play. Yeah, right. Big handoff. Nice play. Catch is made by Gutschall. He battles up. He's going to be knocked out of bounds in port territory at about the 48-yard line. Just uh, clock running down in the first quarter. We're under a minute, 26 seconds remaining. Very scary play, but it was efficient and it worked. I... Uh, don't know if I always like to do that early in a ball game, but uh, it worked there. A nice pass and catch. Kutz to Kutchow there. Nice pickup. Second completion, too, by uh, Craig Kutz. First and 10 Raiders on the 48 yard line. Pitch out to Medina. Student body left. Medina bouncing to the outside. He's got around the corner. One man to beat. And he's ripped down inside the 25 yard line by Nick Newland. Newland saving a touchdown. Medina getting great blocking on the outside. Well, he did get outside, Marty, and Santos has pretty good speed. Not blistering fast, but he's got pretty good speed, and he showed it there, and just about enough for a TD there, but uh, that just might end our first quarter. 25-yard pickup by Santos. And that's the end of the first quarter with North on top, three to nothing and on the move. There's a new experience around every corner as you discover Wisconsin. Wisconsin like you've never seen before. I build schools. I battle injustice. I eradicate landmines. I feed the hungry. I shape international policy. I protect children. I fight for human rights. I find homes for refugees. I dig wells. I develop a company. I teach people to read. I influence the president. I heal the sick. I comfort the grieving. I make the world better. I make a difference. I change the world, so can you. <laughs> We're 
we're back at North High, and there you see the uh, lead. That's the uh, North High side of the field. Medina in six carries. Chris has 38 yards. Uh, that last one was a big one. Put him deep into uh, port territory. Well, a big call there by Coach Tudis. Uh, at the fourth down play. You got that right. Fourth and about five there and in your own territory. And uh, it executed and worked. And then Santos Medina running behind that fat pride offensive line and uh, rambles down into uh, port territory. And then another opportunity to score early here in the uh, second quarter. Kutz is two for six for uh, 12 yards. Two in a row. Yep, two in a row. Okay, it's first and down, first and 10 north. They're on the 23 yard line. Quick handoff. First back through his gut and He barrels down to about the uh, 15 yard line. Close to a first down. Well, you see that line working again, and now we're going to go with the hurry up here, Marty. An official marker's worst nightmare. Second down, and about three. Oh. Whistle stops action. Let's see what this is all about. Probably be against North. Oh, you changed something up, and... Unfortunately, got a penalty. I think you're trying to catch Port offside, but uh, I think they're going to catch somebody uh, moving. Yep, illegal motion on North. They'll pack on five yards, put it back near the 20. Still going to be second down. Make it eight. Got Sean Medina in the backfield, Pitch and uh, Herman split out. Handoff, fake handoff. Kutz keeps it on the uh, quarterback option and rips down inside the 15 yard line. Very Close hard. to a first down. Very hard run there by Craig, bouncing off people, dragging people. First time we've seen that play tonight, Coach. Yeah. And it is a first down. Kutz goes for eight yards, just got it. Ball spotted on the, uh, just outside the 10, so we're gonna call it the 11 yard line. North was down here earlier only to get a field goal. Let's see if they can get, put six on the board. Herman in motion. Pitch out to Medina to the left. He gets around the corner and is ripped down inside the five yard line. Well, Pushed out of bounds at about the three. I was watching after the pitch, Sean McGee and Peter Preggy with great seal blocks. Because of those seal blocks, the outside was open and Santos had an alley there to get to. Just an outstanding blocking there by those two young men on that side. Second down north. Inside the five yard line. Inside handoff to Gutschow. He's hit right at the point of attack and is pushed back. He got maybe a yard. Good defensive stand. Werner getting off the bottom of the pile for Port Washington. And in the mix was also Dan Baronic. There you see it, it is on the two, Marty. Well, this is where Fat Pride, that's what those big offensive linemen call themselves. This is where they gotta do the pushing. Two more yards. Medina, the lone setback, got you offset eye to the right. And they're gonna sweep right. Good blocking, but Medina slips down. Over there to make them cut back was uh, Johnny Lancer. Also plays quarterback. So not much there for Medina. I think they're gonna give him a shot here. Heck, try to go for it here. He got them pinned back. Loss of a yard. Yeah, Santos just slipped there. He's trying to go to the long side of the field there. 
Cut well, back, he saw his hole, but. One thing that uh, North is pretty good at is getting out and running. They're pretty good with lateral pursuit and their linemen, although they're not real big, they move quite well. And we got a timeout North, I believe. They're gonna talk over what they're going to do. But I was gonna say, Coach, when you get that kind of speed, you also gotta measure that against the defensive speed and the port seems to have pretty good quickness. Yep. They, uh, good timeout here too. Make sure you know what you got everybody on the right page and it's squared. Even if you don't make it, not saying they're not going to make it, but just if they don't, you're forcing uh, Port Washington to march 95 yards down the field or so. Well, one of the things that uh, makes me think this is probably a good maneuver is their defense has been able to stop Port so far tonight. Yep. It's always nice to know you have that uh, Permansky. Yeah, out of the wide receiver spot that can uh, just out athletic a lot of people <laughs> and make uh, circus catches out on the wide side. I was just thinking that in the back of my head, but I didn't want to jinx anything here. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. We haven't heard of uh, Brian Herman much on the offensive uh, side yet. There you see the scoreboard. North has looked very good here tonight. They've uh, run the ball quite well. Their defense has been uh, very good. Boy, you can sure run Nate Pitch on a little slant here. There's He's nobody all, over there yeah, by him. One on one. He's not even on the camera he saw out there. Herman wide right. Pitch out to Medina. Pass. Half Medina. Back option pass and Herman is right there wide open for an easy six. You know, Santos runs a, plays a pretty good third base and he can throw it over there so that didn't surprise me at all. He's on target all the time. must have been at some of those games <laughs> and saw him throw. <laughs> I see him in spring, and he picks up every ball and throws it over there. And just as you said it, Brian Herman gets the uh, six there. He plays a pretty nice outfield, too. But a uh, nice play call, good fake. And I'll tell you what, how can you lose Brian Herman if you're a Port Washington guy? I just confusing. Well, I'll tell you, that's what the running game will do. You know, you have a little success running the ball wide and up the middle, and all of a sudden, you know, people bite on that, and uh, Klein's kick. More leverage that time, up and through, and that makes it 10 to nothing north with 9.28 remaining in the first half. I'm Bob McGrath. And I'm Big Bird. And we love to make music. Music can help kids learn. Did you know that making music, any music... Like Twinkle Twinkle? All uh, right, like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star can help your child with language, reading, and even math. And it's lots of fun, too. To find out how children learn and grow with music, visit www.amc-music.org. And you'll see... Music works wonders. Yeah, it sure does. I see uh, Ed Thompson and the assistant coaches talking to the troops, getting them fired up. His son David is a freshman quarterback and of course his eldest son quarterback the uh, Raiders a couple years ago. Now he's playing a little safety at Valparaiso University. Charlie Thompson? Charlie Thompson, what did I say? He didn't. Oh, <laughs> that's why I saw him this summer. He played uh, a couple ball games for uh, the Cleveland Wildcats in the East Shore League. Boy, the Golden Raiders are pumped up now. Ball is picked up and taken by uh, Helm. They're just flying down the field here. And he's going to get hit and dropped outside the 20 at about the 23 yard line. Good pursuit by Sheboygan North. Yeah, Andrew Priggy on the play there. Yep. You're quicker than I am. Well, I had a Travis M Michael making a play. Or Michael Travis, pardon me. All we need is one more roster here. <laughs> it will be complete. We got about six of these flying by. Somebody ran up here with one saying, oh, the numbers are wrong on the first one. So we went through both sides and everything was exactly the same. Once they're at quarterback, Oh, it looks like a little mix up in the backfield. He's gonna get dropped back at about the 21 or 22 yard line. Well, North is pumped up and things are just not getting any better for those Port Washington Pirates, I'll tell you. 
Loss of two. It's going to make it second down and 12. There's Big Nick. Reschke. The Reschke Meister. Yep, center, senior. Pitch out, trying to make the cutback, but not being able to get much for Port Washington was Mike Preisler. Preisler maybe picked up a yard at most. We're gonna make it third down and 11. Ball spotted on about the 23 yard line. Good pursuit by the Raiders to uh, keep Preisler from uh, getting to the outside. Splitting out wide to the right is number 80, Justin Mitchell. Port also has a wide receiver out to the left. Luncer's pass to Mitchell is complete. He shuffles off one tackler, but not the next. Herman and Angles out there making the stop after the pass completion from Luncer to Mitchell. Right, that's the type of play that you want to run and just get by the first guy and then you can maybe get away. But what happened there was Nate Kautzer kind of slowed him up and you're right, the other pursuit of the Raiders were there and that's going to force for Washington into their second punt. And if you recall, the first punt didn't do so well. It got blocked. That was the uh, first attempted pass by Port was completed, but uh, for very little yardage. Herman back deep, pitch picks it up on the 30, 43, eludes one tackler and gets it up near the 50 at about the 48. Pitch on the return. Good field position for the Golden Raiders as the defense held once again. And just like that, North has the ball with another chance to put some points on the board. We're at uh, 7.05 of the second quarter. North on top, 10 to ninth, nothing. Klein opened the scoring with a 27 yard field goal. And then Medina to Brian Herman for three yards and a touchdown. Out of the shotgun, Kutz takes it. Fake inside handoff. Option. Pitches back to Medina, he's got the corner. Ludes one tackler, gets by another, gets a big block. He's on the loose, he could go. He's gonna get chased out and tackled by David Larson, but Medina running the ball with authority. A big chunky real estate on that play all the way down inside the 10 yard line, I believe. Make it inside the 15. Boy, and the whole coaching staff is jumping up and down for joy. A perfectly uh, run option play there. Craig waited right to the last minute, pitched it to Santos, and then Santos, Santos showed those magic feet and lumbered out, out inside the 20 once again. 40-yard pickup for Medina. He's got over 85 yards. Tyler Gutschall up the middle. He stopped after a short gain. In on the play was Brandon Werner. Report. Boy, we've seen a wide variety of offensive plays here so far, Marty. Options, halfback options, quarterback running, straight up the middle situations, long passes. Gutschel with a five yard pickup, Coach, a little more than I originally thought. It's second down and five. Gutschel the up back, Medina the deep back. Pitch and Herman wide left and right. Second back through is Medina. He avoids one tackler and drags people down inside the five. He's gonna be close to a first down. Great running there by Santos Medina. Give Medina four yards on that play. Just ripped off 40 before. Kutz coming in, it's third and one. Big play for uh, North. We're at uh, 529 and counting. Cuts on a keeper. Scoots right between the uh, center and the left guard to get the first, first down. That was a nice call. Norse right up on the line again here. They are just wearing down the Pirates. As they're ready to go again. A lot of fat pride up there, that offensive line. First and goal at the one. 
Friggy, tight end on the right side where he's been most of the night. Second back through is Medina. Dives into the end zone, touchdown. Right side of the line did it for the Raiders there. Getting off the pile was big number 77, Sean McGee. Also on that left side is Andy Eirich and Nick Reschke, the center. Of course, that's the right side. We should really call those guys off, eh? Yep. Peter right, Reschke. Peter Reschke. Nick Reschke and TJ Angles. Yeah. Right side of the line doing it there. Klein on. Kick the extra point. He got more leverage that time than he did the first two combined, and it's up and good. That makes the score with 5.03 remaining until halftime, 17 to nothing north. Athletic competition is all about potential. The opportunity to look inside yourself, to challenge yourself, to be better than you ever dreamed imaginable. Junior achievement is also about dreams and the potential to make those dreams come true. JA's free enterprise education programs help kids say, I can when everything around them says you can. Junior Achievement, let their potential be your inspiration. I had a chance to talk with Charlie Reschke prior, there's, T, there's KT. KT, Kyle Tetzlog in the North sweatshirt. I had a chance to talk to uh, Charlie Reschke prior to the game, Chris, and uh, he was uh, very encouraged by their performance last week. He knows that uh, Port could be a pretty formidable opponent tonight, but I'll tell you, North is uh, dealing it to him so far in this ball game. Yeah, and I was listening to the ESPN radio, the uh, preseason high school, or excuse me, pre-Friday night, and Coach Tudis was on there saying, yep, his boys were really pumped up last week, and uh, he had to kind of bring them down, and uh, I'll tell you what, I don't know how much he brought them down because these Raiders are just flying down the field again. Klein's kick is taken by Helm at the 10 yard line. He breaks to the outside, he's got room to run. And Klein makes the uh, touchdown saving tackle outside the 40 yard line. So good 30 yard plus return by Dan Helm. Well, they're gonna spot it inside the 40. He must have stepped out of bounds. Wow. Take it back, make it the 38. Uh, still, 28-yard return, that's yeah, not too bad. And we're gonna have Klein to tackle anyways. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky he didn't get a penalty for hitting him out of bounds. <laughs> inside handoff, barreling forward for a pretty good yardage. I think it was Werner again, was it? Yeah, must have been Werner. Here we go. Pick up a five yards by Werner, makes it second down and five. Ball spotted at the 43 yard line. Warner, the tailback, fake to him. Luncer has it. He's not going to get much, maybe a yard. Well, I'll tell you what, they don't seem like they're on the right page at all. I don't know if that's what they want. You did talk to the coaching staff over at Port Washington. and Well, he said they wanted to get Luncer running the ball, and uh, he hasn't run it a whole lot, and he hasn't run it very successfully when he has, but... Uh, Give credit to that North defense. They're really swarming to the ball. And uh, yet, you know, and you, you talked about it earlier, Chris, you know, you can't just give up. You still got to play your spots so you protect against the reverse and the cutbacks. Right, and most of the time when you think of a quarterback running, you think he gets out on the uh, ends right, outside exactly. the tackles a little bit, but like this, but Brian Herman's right there. Herman in on the stop, along with uh, Lucas Wilsing, one of your favorite ball players, but not football. Well, I'll tell you, here we go. We got a uh, big play here for Port, and they're going to call a timeout, Marty. Timeout, Port with 3-17 uh, three thir three remaining. North on top, 17 to nothing. We're going to take a short break and uh, be right back. I love the... 
Not that I have much time with these little guys and my job, but when my wife went back to school, I thought, why can't I? Certain things in life demand my attention, but a new career in computer science deserves my attention. An evening class at Lakeland doesn't tie my life in knots, thanks to a flexible, easy-to-manage schedule that allows me to balance work, school, and the twins. Evening classes that meet once a week, that's the easy part. There you see it, North on top, 17 to nothing. It's Dave Moss and Brad Schmidt, Peter Ross, some of the other happy Raiders right now. Big fourth down play, it's fourth and one. Ball spotted on the 47 yard line. If a Port doesn't get this, North has plenty of time to move 47 yards for a score. Well, Ball in, Santos in can run 40 yards at a pop, <laughs> he'll get down there pretty fast. Yeah, really. Okay, here we go. Lunts are under center, Werner behind him. Werner gets the handoff, he's got the first down and more. He's gonna get dropped at the 45 yard line. And sometimes that happens, you got so many people up and tight, if you do get through a hole, you gotta make sure you have some guys back there to make the play, and Santos was. That's the time that sometimes they get through the line and so many people are up in the line in the box. It's like once you get by that blitzing linebacker, there's a lot of real estate out there to be had. That was good that uh, Santos was back there kind of playing a little. Playing uh, cautiously. Yeah. It's first and 10. We're at 255 and counting. Ball spotted on the 45 of Sheboygan North. Fort Washington trying to mount an attack. Cutting back on the inside was Werner. Not much for him on the inside. We used to call it, wasn't that cross buckle we used to that call was, that? Yeah, Mike Preisler, pardon me, not Werner. Actually, that was a pretty good pickup. Pickup of five yards by Preisler. For whatever reason, Coach, it seems like I'm not seeing the ball very good. Looks like they stop him short, and all of a sudden I look up, and it's a five-yard pickup. Well, the clock continues to roll. Getting close to two minutes here. Port still has two timeouts to use. Inside handoff to Werner. He cuts back. He breaks through the line of scrimmage. He's going to go for the touchdown. He's at the 10, the 5, in. Touchdown. Brandon Werner. Well, you could With a 40 yard pickup. You could just tell the way he runs the football that he's gonna be tough to st stop all night. And that time he got all the way through the line and scored. You know, it's like uh, North had their middle linebacker shifted off to the left or the right, because once he got through the middle of the line, boy, it was wide open. There wasn't a free safety back there or anything. Well, biggest play of the night for uh, Port Washington. They've been stymied most of the evening. A big 40-yard run by Brandon Werner. Lunsford on the hold. The kick is up and good. No good. By Bob Wood, no good. Boy, it looked like it was right through. Sailed off to the right, I believe. Well, with 2.04 remaining until halftime, North still on top, but now it's 17 to six. You know, we sing for millions of girls, but helping out in schools, that's the real deal, baby. I know our love can multiply. I'm the cute one, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever been backstage before? Cause you're the exit. I think you'll find that gravity is key in what I do. Once was one, but now we're two. I'm spinning out of control. <laughs> <laughs> back at Urban Field where the Raiders lead at 17 to six. They've run the ball well tonight and they've had just enough of a passing attack to uh, keep the Port defenders honest, but uh, Port to their credit made a good uh, offensive showing that last possession and marched down for a, the big play being the uh, Werner 40 yard touchdown run. Well, it's very important for North to finish out this half. 
Line drive yep. kick again. They don't want to get it to uh, Herman. Pitch has it, picks it up at about the 15. He's jitterbugging through the 30, out near the 35 yard line before he's hit and dropped. Looks like a little water beetle out there. Yeah. Well, Nate Pitch, he's a good jumper too. And First and 10 for North on the 33 yard line. Kind of like triple jumped his way through the uh, to the group there. Well, Chris, what do you do? Do you try to get the score or do you try to run it out? You got him under two minutes, 156. Take care of the ball, that's for sure. You got a nice lead, played a good half. Just one bad, you know, defensive, you know, play. Otherwise, you've been real tough there. So you want to finish strong here. You definitely don't want to put the ball on the carpet here. Pitch out to Medina. Herman gets a good block on the outside. Medina bounces off for one tackler and is hit and dropped outside the 35 yard line. Well, I ran to, again, the long side there. Give him about three or four yards. Looked Kept like he had bounce. a lot more. Yeah, it did. Herman had a good crack back block. Second down and six. Fake handoff, left and right. Gutschel's got it on the outside and a little swing pass. He's out in the first down territory outside the 45 to about the 47. That's nice safe play call there, Coach. Yeah, and that play's worked a couple times. They've run it about four times. He's nice and in the seam there. And again, nice, safe, easy pass for uh, Craig to make and positive yardage. 10 yard pickup. Gutschel with his second catch of the night. Now we're just four yards away from uh, Port Territory. Clock running again at 116, 115. They empty out Medina here and nobody's on him. Nobody is on Medina. Nobody. Nobody is on Medina. And he throws it deep to pitch, incomplete. Medina standing right out there in the slot position and he's going back to Kutz and saying, what in the world are you doing? Throw me the ball. Nobody was on Medina. The defense did not adjust to that uh, formation whatsoever. No, and they, they even pointed at, at somebody's got to pick up the back and nobody did. I mean, oh yeah. But they're only high school kids. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for us to do it up here, <laughs> really. I don't want. Now you get a whole different picture when you're down there standing under center, you know, looking and surveying and trying to figure out what's open. Well, Pitch is uh, standing out here and uh, recognizing that is uh, Andrew Schultz, number seven. And now they got a receiver on Herman in, in the slot position. Fake handoff to Medina. Kutz Priggy. gets it to Priggy. He's inside the 40. He's hit and dropped at about the 36 yard line. Nice pass and catch. North has a couple of timeouts remaining. They may want to think about using those. Well, same situation again, Marty, again. Oh, past the linebackers in front of the defensive backs and Priggy finds himself in there and Craig makes a nice pass into that little seam there. Pickup of 11 yards. And three wide receivers out to the right. Medina and uh, Herman in the slot. Trying a little, uh, kind of a screen pass to Herman. He was coming, he was the wide slot. He came towards Kutz and fired it right through a defender. Got their hands up, may have tipped the ball. That defender was Matt Prom, number 41. Well, we've seen that play over, over the last three years, Marty. They try to get Brian the ball over there in a screen. Sometimes it just kind of come across the middle as well. Yeah, just get him the ball and let him do his thing. I was afraid there just for a second if it was gonna be a lateral, but I saw that the ball was tipped and that's why I kind of made a Herman, backwards throw. Herman very wide to the right. Luntzer on him, inside handoff to Gutschow. He breaks loose through the line of scrimmage and gets it down to about the 30. We're at 34 seconds remaining. I believe North calls a timeout. Gutschow on the carry. Well, you had uh, Brian Herman wide open that time, too. He was uh, giving him the outside of the field. Well, I think Luntzer felt that uh, if there was gonna be a deep pass, he could get back on it. He definitely wasn't on him, that's for sure. Nice two minute drive here for North. It's gonna be third down and about four for North. Six yard pickup for Gutschow on that last play. Gotta to remember too that you have a most important thing right now is get the first down 
because if you get the first down, the clock will stop and give you some time. You can either spike the ball or uh, have use another timeout or whatever, but just remember you have that as a weapon. That was North's second timeout of the half. You have one remaining. Those fans don't look intense enough for me. They're, well, enjoying, they're enjoying the night. Well, there's a nice crowd here. Came out to support the team. and Hey, you know, it's, it's always nice when you come off of that uh, road win, you come back at home, you know, people you know, have some high expectations and uh, North not letting them down. There you see David Priggy. And Barbie Klein. Herman in motion. Pitch out to Medina, trying to get to the outside. Picks up a good block by Gutschel, gets it inside the uh, 25. There's your timeout. And he's got the first down. Now you can either spike it or run a quick play here, but be up on the line as soon as uh, they put the ball back in play. El Dembor does that. First down and 10. And they are. Good ball, job. Ball spotted at the 24-yard uh, line. Nick and uh, Craig did a good job there. Kutz dropping back, looking deep. He's got pitch open. Can't quite make the catch. Had to come back for it. And again, the same thing that happened with Herman earlier in the half when he tried to make that adjustment. His feet went out from underneath him. 15 seconds remaining until halftime. Second down and 10. Ball spotted on the 24-yard line. Here you see a nice shot of Craig Kutz. He went to St. Dominic's. Plays baseball. What's your nickname? The Dominic what? Comets. The Comets. He's a Comet. Medina in the, deep in the backfield. Gutschall set off to the right. Herman on a slant now out and go. Herman looking out. It's going to be too deep and out of bounds. Eight seconds remaining until halftime. How long did that play take? Six seconds? Uh, there were 15, I think seven seconds that one took. So I'm wondering if you can play, try one more play here and still give Eric Klein a chance at a field goal. I'll tell you the way he kicked that extra point, he can maybe get it there. Well, his last two have been, uh, you know, much better. That first one barely, he just yeah. got over. I think he got tipped there. Maybe something over the middle where uh, Craig doesn't have to throw it quite so far. They could maybe use that last time out and get into field goal position. Yep. Puts rolling to the right, getting pressured, throws back to Priggy, makes a great catch at the end zone line. Are they gonna give him the touchdown? No, timeout. but he's inside the one. And a timeout, 23 yard pass and catch. Puts to Priggy. Well, let me tell you, Having the home scoreboard maybe helped you there as that got right down there and the clock was stopped immediately when uh, he hit the ground. And so with one second left, oh, there's a penalty on North. Yellow flag on the field is gonna negate all of this. I think we're talking about just like the second penalty too. But they uh, had an illegal motion uh, earlier right. in the half, and you're right, this might only be the second one. It's been a relatively penalty-free half. Port maybe has one or two at the most. That was a great catch, though, by Peter Priggy. Made a great adjustment, you're right. And uh, going backwards, he got the hands up, and uh, dynamite catch. Too bad it won't count. Holding on north. A lot of talking by the officials. Just give me the ball and march it off. One second remaining until halftime. North on top, 17 to six. Dean Tudis wants to know who held. Charlie Stark. Our head official giving the explanation. Charlie, a former North High football player. I played with Charlie here back in the 60s. Charlie now lives in Manitowoc with his wife, Carol. Carol was a 68 grad with me. She was a holy namer. 
Going to get a timeout here, Marty. Yep. Marty for Last timeout for North. As long as we're talking about the 60s, Chris, I know you probably don't know this name, but uh, back when I was a kid, used to go to a lot of North games, and uh, they had an incident here where uh, the North quarterback, Dennis Ruppel, had his leg broken near the south end of the field, and he's laid on the field for probably 25 to 30 minutes before an ambulance finally got over here. I mean, it just took forever. It was un unbelievable. For years after that, all home games at Sheboygan always had an ambulance there. Oh. Of course, now they have uh, sports medicine that uh, always at the games. But anyway, Dennis Ruppel was out of town for many, many years with his job. He's now retired living in Sheboygan. We might have to get him on the air for an interview <laughs> one of these games. So Dennis, if you're listening, give Kerry Coutzer a call. Sure, a memory he'll always remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's buried somewhere in the yellow pages. Third down and 20. Pitch out to Medina. Fakes a reverse. He's not going to get much, and that'll be the half. Medina hit and dropped at about the 36, and that's halftime with North on top. 17 to 6. who you are, or what you drive, or where you live. You have the power to give someone the greatest gift in the world, life. Make the decision to be an organ donor. Make the decision to donate life. The less art kids get, the more it shows. Are yours getting enough? Art. Ask for more.
We're at halftime where the Golden Raiders lead Port Washington by a score of 17 to six. Some halftime stats. Sheboygan North for the first half ran the ball 21 times, Chris, for 128 yards. Uh, passing game wasn't quite as effective. They only hit on five of 13 for 36 yards. Of those attempts, Klitz was four for 12, Medina one for one with the touchdown pass to uh, Herman. On the flip side, Port Washington really did stress running the ball, but they didn't have a lot of possession time. They ran the ball 19 times for 89 yards, had a 40-yard pickup uh, late in the first half that uh, led to their touchdown, and they only threw the ball once. Luntzer hit uh, Mitchell for that two-yard gain. Uh, so Raiders playing pretty good defense, but they still got their hands full. Port Washington's going to give them a ball game in the second half. Well, what I see on that sheet, Marty, that shines for me for uh, Port Washington is Brandon Werner is, what, 80 four of the 91 yards so hopefully the coaching staff got together and can focus in on that number one that kid's a tough runner that's for darn sure but heck of an offensive uh line work and uh rushing attack for for the golden raiders when you get a hundred yard back in the first half that's just what you want i was just going to mention on the individual basis medina 13 carries and 100 yards and he had good support from Tyler Gutschow, who had five carries and 21 yards, and uh, Kutz, who had three carries for seven yards. So uh, they're balancing it out. You know, Medina's getting most of the carries and most of the yards, but uh, you got to respect those other guys also. Yeah, one as I just were talking just before we came back, back of a call by Coach Tudis on fourth and four inside your own territory. That worked. It eventually led to a score, which gave you a big time momentum. Um, but on the flip side, I think this is a big, Big key uh, possession right off the bat here. Port Washington's gonna get the football. And uh, the last time Port had the ball, they did score. So a good defensive stand, which North has had basically the whole game except for that just last drive. Uh, see how uh, things happen here in the uh, second half. Let's talk a little bit about the receiving end for North. Uh, Peter Priggy had two catches for uh, 16 yards. Had a big one erased late in the half, but would have given North first down on the one yard line. That would have been a three yard, 23 yard reception. As it is, it was wiped away, and he made a great catch on it, too. And also, with two catches was Tyler Gutschow. He had two catches for uh, 17 yards. We mentioned Herman's catch uh, from Medina for the touchdown. There you get a good shot of uh, head coach for North, Dean Tudis. Beating his alma mater. We've talked about this before. He did go to Port Washington, and uh, this is a team you'd really like to beat. Um, we are gonna talk about the South score. We did hear some rumors about how they're doing when the people watch this uh, tomorrow, Saturday, they'll know what the score is. Well, they'll but, know uh, tonight. Tonight they were playing it at 10.30. Uh, right. so, so we can tell them it's uh, seven to three at halftime. No, uh, Beaver Dam is leading. Uh, our next ball game next Friday night is gonna be uh, Sheboygan South at North. Uh, a real barn burner early key season ball game in the conference. That'll open up conference play. And uh, North comes away with a victory here. They're gonna be really fired up for that ball game, especially with the licking that they took last last year. Yes, and uh, I hope South wins that game because that'll just you know make it even more exciting. Two teams coming in here at 2-0. and Well, North's gotta finish their job. They got 24 minutes of work to do. This one's not in the bag at all, so. You know what that means? They both come in undefeated. More people show up, we can give them those little handoffs for that information about the referendum. That's right. <laughs> Getting out and voting for the referendum, that's for sure. Chris and I not only team up on these broadcasts, we're also on the uh, media committee for this information uh, committee that's being run by the school district to inform the voters about uh, the referendum issues that will, will be coming up in November. So. Uh, as you uh, follow articles in the paper and come to these North games, there'll be handouts for you. Make sure you look at them and read them. Be an informed voter. Yep, North and South and Jefferson, uh, all projects that desperately need to to uh, be dealt with. But let's get down to football, Marty. 24 minutes is of work here for the Golden Raiders. Back deep is uh, Dan Baranek and Dan Helm. Short kick. Bouncing picked up at about the 17 by Baranek. He's trying to get to the outside, eludes two tacklers, and he's finally wrapped up and stopped. Up making the tackle was Nate Pitch, and he also got some assistance. I think that was Michael Travis again. Travis or Moss, either way, yep. no they stopped him. Yep. No Moss. Ball is spotted on the 25-yard line. It'll be uh, first and 10. 
for Port Washington. Like Chris mentioned, they ended the first half with a uh, scoring drive. North needs to uh, establish dominance on the defensive side of the ball. It was a 70, pardon me, a 62 yard drive in uh, six plays. Big play being that 40 yarder. Taking it up the middle was uh, Preisler, I believe that was. Mike Preisler. Little yardage. He's been pretty stopped, it, pretty much stopped today, Marty. They've done a good job, but they keep giving it to him just to keep the uh, Golden Raiders honest. Second down and seven. Ball on the 28 yard line. Quick snap count given to uh, Werner. He drags tacklers up over the 30. Werner having a good ball game. He's a threat, man. You know, that guy's quick. Got through the line of scrimmage on that 40 yarder and uh, North couldn't catch him. Yeah, he's been he's been a hard, hard runner. A little bit different, high knee runner, and uh, he's got big, thick legs that are tough to bring down when he's pumping them up and down like that. Third down and three. Lunser on the keeper, he gets through the line of scrimmage. He's being chased down and caught inside the 30 yard line by Andrew Priggy. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, we haven't seen much from him, but boy, when he got through the burst there, we are saying how much how he likes to get out, rather see him outside the tackle, but boy, he had a hole and off he ran, and uh, Andrew Priggy with pretty good speed ran him down. 36 yard run. And a replay. We got the replay thing going too. We got her clicking now, boy, baby. First and 10 and uh, big first down for Port. Warner on the inside handoff. He gets a pretty good chunky yardage before he's pulled back inside the 25 yard line. That? Up there making the stop was uh, Michael Travis. Was it that or Nate Pitch? Either one of those guys. Somebody hog tied him over there and brought him down. Second down and six, pick up a four. Werner behind the center, he gets the handoff, off tackle left, and gets pretty good yardage. It's gonna be short of the first down. We're starting to work that side a little bit, Marty. On the bottom of the pile for North, it's either Nick Joe, I think it was Santos Medina. About three out of the last four plays they've run that way. Another four yard pickup for Werner, makes a third down and two. Actually, it's a real big play here. You want to make him go fourth down. Mitchell is wide out on the right. Single coverage on him. What the heck? A little fake to the right and a handoff to the left, but uh, we have whistles blowing. Let's hope it's uh, illegal motion on port. But we'll have to see what they uh, decipher. That's what it is, illegal motion on the Pirates. That's a big penalty. One thing I didn't look on my stat sheet, Chris, the uh, the uh, penalty situation. I know we didn't have a lot. Uh, one of them came at a crucial time on that last possession by North as uh, they were looking to get a touchdown. That makes it third down and seven instead of third and two. Again, Mitchell wide right. Werner's a deep back, he gets the handoff off left tackle again, and he barrels through before he's knocked back by Santos Medina and Tyler Gutschall, and that's gonna be a first down. Well, I'll tell you, they're running that way big time, Marty. Uh, trying to figure out where they spotted inside the 20 at about the 18 yard line. Oh, I think they're having a measurement instead. And I think you spoke a little too soon. He might be a tad short. There's a spot, there's a good shot there by Brian. There's enough zebras there to start a zoo. 
But the, you were right, Marty. You could see it from here. First down all the way. <laughs> First down all the way. Seven yard pickup. And Werner doing it in uh, pretty good chunks. He had a four, a four, a four, and now a seven yard pickup. It's first and 10. So Werner hit at the line of scrimmage and he's hit and dropped Herman in there along with a couple other Golden Raiders. Well, Port for once tried to run to the right, and it just did not work very well. Bottle up there, you're right. Tommy Phelan, I think, getting up off the bottom, number 74. Yeah. Herm over there. Not a lot of room to run that way. Pick up a one yard, makes it second down and nine. Werner the deep back, he gets a handoff again off a left tackle and uh, they found something over on that uh, right side of the Raider defense because they keep going to it and uh, they've been pretty successful. Fine. Yeah, they really work in that way, Marty. Seems like another third and three, we've had a lot of these. Ball spotted just outside the 10 yard line. Last time we got a little help with a penalty but Third down and three. I wouldn't be surprised if they go that way again, Marty. Werner piling up the yardage. And now they send a guy over there too. His helm. Fumble, picked up by Luntzer and he's hit and pushed back. I don't think they're gonna have the first down on this. It'll be fourth down and short just inside the 10 yard line. And a tough break there for North too. It bounced right back into Luntzer's hands. The old yo-yo action. We have fourth and one, they're inside the 10. Some of the North parents here, Mr. McGee and Mr. Angles, trying to get the uh, crowd all fired up, get the student section going. See if they can hold. Werner, they've been, le they'd like to go left and they do again. And Werner battles his way up. I think he's got the first down. They're inside the 10 yard line. It's gonna be close. It's all a matter on the spot. Oh. They gotta bring him out, Marty. Bringing him out. What do you got here, coach? They make it or not? Good angle there by uh, Brian on the field camera. Stretch it out. Oh. Can't you pull it any farther? Nope. First down. Well, Werner is finding the going a lot tougher than he did earlier, but he does have the first down. Well, you have a lot of red on that paper, which means that North hasn't had the ball yet. Not at all. And it is first and goal, ball spotted on the eight yard line. Isato Hemi on the top camera. Brian Andrews, of course, on the field camera. Lunzer, a fake handoff to Werner, follows him into the line off to the left side and prances into the end zone, basically untouched. Nice run that time by Johnny Lunzer. Well, there was a nice hole there, Marty. Really cleared it out there and kind of just had to go a little bit left, slant back right and right through that hole that you said. It was wide open there. You see him finishing it up. Put it down like you've been there before. And I believe Port's gonna have to possibly go for two here. Yeah, they, I don't believe they have their kicker in there. Uh, that would be uh, Bob Wood, number eight. He's not in there. They come up uh, the full house backfield. Werner's the up back. Mike Chrysler, the deep back. Fake handoff on a reverse. They're gonna throw a pass. And that two point conversion is good. Pass going to Nick Newell. Pass is made by uh, number two, Blake Prager. That's a nice little play. No kidding. 
Two point conversion makes the score with 6.29 remaining in the third quarter, 17 to 14 North. It's all going to be fine. Come on, take a deep breath. Keep on breathing. Got Miloff spinning the dials in the truck tonight. Uh, Steve Reinert also offering some uh, technical assistance. So you mentioned Brian Andrews on the field camera, and Isato Hemi, new guy on the block, taking over for uh, Andy McKillop. He can hardly wait for those October games when it gets to be about 40 degrees and the wind is howling a little, you know. Well, Hemi told me he's from northern Japan, so he's used to this weather. He doesn't know anything yet until he gets up there with a the camera. <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm just happy to be in the booth with you. Nate Pitch takes it on about the 5. He's out to the 10. Jitterbugging out to the 15. Trying to get out. I don't think he's going to get to the 20. Being uh, hemmed in by Dan Helm. Kind of looked like the opening kickoff. Same type situation. You know, they wanted to uh, clear the side over here, but uh, he just took it straight up field. And this time he didn't have as much luck. He's going to have to start about the 19 and a half, 19 yard line. We're at the 622 mark. Uh, nice long drive, 75 yards by uh, Port for the score, and they did that in 12 plays, Chris. Make it 11, two point, no, make it 12. 12 play drive, 75 yards. Inside handoff to Gutschow, he's battling through. Picks up pretty good chunk of real estate. Give Gutschall a five yard pickup. Makes it second down and five. Same cast of characters, pitch wide left, Herman wide right. Gutschall and Medina in the backfield with the cuts. And Medina slow getting off the ball. I gave it to Gutschall again. It, okay, he gave it to Gutschall. He was slow getting off the ball. I think they're up, setting them up here, Marty. Picked up maybe a yard on that play. Setting them up. That's how you work it. You set them up a little bit. And Third down and four. Fake handoff. Kutz trying to run the option, but uh, Port had it smelled out. Not much blocking up front. You got to have some initial good blocks. Uh, Kutz didn't get that. Consequently, he was dumped in the backfield for a two yard loss. Oh, Eric Klein's going to attempt his second punt tonight. First one was 37 yards. Lines punt is away. Fair catch being called and made by the Port return man, Dan Baronic. And Port will have it again. Well, not a good offensive push by North that time. And uh, they're giving the ball up with uh, Port getting it in a very good field position. And we got a flag on the field. We'll have to see what this is all about. Looks though they're talking to the Port Washington player. Greg Jakobek. Could be a legal man downfield, but I shouldn't. Todd Stuffergren over talking to uh, Dean Tudis. Stuffy and I umpired a couple baseball games this yep. past summer. Holding on north and uh, whoa. We'll make them kick it again. Port forcing North back. Gonna make them punt it again. When well, they had the ball in pretty good field position, coach. Kind of an interesting play. Well, 
Now he's got a kick out of his end zone, though. Yeah, it's true. He'll do fourth down over. Boy, this is a big one. Well, I was going to say it's got to be half the distance, which puts him inside the 10. About the 9-yard line? Yep. So Eric's going to have to kick another one here. and Well, it does put a lot of pressure on the long snapper, that's for sure. Yeah, no win, so that won't be a factor. Boy's got a block, though. Veronic is uh, lined up at the 42-yard line before he was back on his 42. Right. A but good 15 yards back, so... Uh, Port Washington, and they're safe. They're not coming after him. He's got nine guys coming. Good snap. Good kick. Veronic takes it on the 44. He's got a little room to roll him, but he's hit and dropped. Nice tackle made out there by Josh Gilson. Gilly, a former Lincoln Erdman student. He's a really good hockey player. Tough kid. Good speed. Gilly's got to work on the biceps, so coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a big change of yeah, yardage pretty, there. Yeah, they did pick up quite a bit of real estate. I think they would have had it probably about the 47. 43, I think it was. Well, I meant on this side on the first punt, but this time they've got it inside the 40 at the yeah. 39. So that was a, a lot of yards made up like, accepting that penalty. Luntzer on the keeper doesn't get much. Well, I'll tell you, that side's been tough. TJ Engels and Brian Herman have really done a job over there. Yeah, also Andrew Priggy in on that stop. They just have nowhere to go. And uh, no gain. Well, you we got a lot of blue on the first two sheets, Chris. Not too much red, and it's almost all red in the third quarter so far. North still on top, 345 remaining, 17 to 14, second and 10. Werner off that left side again, and they're making hay. North has got to toughen up on that uh, right side of their defense. Fort Washington going off their left side and big, picking up big chunks of yardage. Werner picks up a five yard gain. You know, that's most of the time you got your probably your best tackle over there. and. Maybe you team up with a good guard. They do have a big, big young man there, number 77, David Bishop. He's a 290 pound fella, and they're using him to his big advantage of running by him again. Werner picking up pretty good yardage. He's got the first down. Yeah, as I said, David Bishop for Port 290 over there. He's, he's a good person to run around there. You see a good shot of the Port Washington Pirates. Ball spotted on the 24-yard line. That was a 10-yard pickup. Werner has 42 yards and nine carries so far. First and 10, Port Washington, and uh, Engels moving over to the uh, right side of the line. Port set, They've had it all their way here in the second half. Werner bouncing to the outside, and he, again, he's got good yardage. Picks up four on that carry. He's got 10 carries already in this in this quarter. To go along with his uh, seven in the first half, he has well over 100 yards in the ball game. He's the leading ground gainer for the game. Once are under center, he had a nine yard touchdown before. We got a different back carrying the ball. This guy's got a white jersey. That might be Preisler. It is. Mike Preisler on the carry. His jersey is pretty clean. <laughs> it's going to be third down and five. Need to stop the mole right here. Werner taking it off tackle. And it looks like he's got the first down. Well, he got a little worried when they kept going to the left, but uh, now they went to the right and gained pretty big yardage. That, uh, yeah, that was. That's not a good sign. 
just wearing down that defensive line. They've been on the field basically, you know, 10 and a half minutes here, Marty. Just uh, of the half is gone, and they've been out there for basically 10 of it, and the port line is going to work. Werner taking it off the right side. It's pretty good. He's going to get pulled back. In on the stop is uh, Michael Travis, along with Herman and uh, Nate Kautzer. But he got it down to about the six. Five-yard pickup. Not quite. Let's make it about a four-yard pickup. Timeout north. Well, with 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Port Washington on the move. North calls a timeout. Uh, let's keep it here, Chris. What do you do if you're north? It's all on the ground for the most yeah. part. Well, now here you can really tighten up the people in the box. Get them up there and uh, make those holes even smaller. Maybe move up the linebackers a little bit. Maybe have eight guys in the box to try to take away this running game. It's pretty much straight. They're not running too many counters or stuff outside. It's all right between the tackles, between the guard, and just the simple holes. And uh, as I said, the port line has really established themselves late in the second quarter and uh, basically for the entire uh, third quarter here. And hey, they're not in yet. So you got a good time out here, stop the momentum, get some possession, get the guys fired up. There's Santos Medina, number 20. Second down and seven for Port Washington. They've uh, really dominated in the third quarter. North has only run off three offensive plays. Port has dominated play the rest of the time. And North needs a stop. Second down and about seven. They got everybody tight, Marty. Werner off the left side. He's made hay there most of the second half, and that time he gets pushed back. Still a pretty good thrust. He did pick up positive yards, picked up about three. Yeah, he gets just through the hole, and then you got a fast swarm, and Raiders there, but the, the hole was created for him to get through, that's for sure. Ball spotted at about the five yard line. Third down. Luncer on a fake handoff, he keeps it, was hit in the backfield, but scrambles forward and got the first down, I believe. Or is he just short, Chris? They're gonna say his knee was down, Marty, back at the five. He tried to stay on his feet. I think you're right there, Marty, but I think they're gonna call his knee down at the five. If that's the case, that's gonna be basically a no-gainer, and that's the end of the third quarter on that play. Luntzer on a keeper, tried to get to the outside, but North had pretty good pursuit there. You see it on the replay just inside the five. Let's see where he gets stopped. Pretty good penetration by North. Getting in there and making the first hit for the Golden Raiders. Looked like Nick Greshke, number 72. Well, anyway, that's the end of the third quarter. North still on top, 17 to 14. We used to write letters to each other a lot. A lot of the notes, they were just really dark. Expressions of anger when he was mad, he hit things. He said something to me about uh, killing himself. You have to take it seriously. The risk is too great. You have to um, try and help them get help. Tell somebody, tell an adult, counselor, parent, whatever. What are you gonna do, let them destroy themselves? I, mean, I don't see much of a choice at all. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteer. Do something nice for someone. We fixed stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up his house. We worked in the woods. 
Clean up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. And you know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. Me? The Ace are my new friends. Are, are you into it? Call 4-H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com. Fourth down and five. Bob Wood, the uh, field goal kicker for Port Washington, is on the sideline. We got Luncer under center. Werner's a deep back. They give it to him off the left side. He scrambles through. He avoids one tackler, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Werner bounced off one tackler, stayed low to the ground, and muscled his way into the, for the score, and that puts Port up. 20 to 17. Wow. Wow, they had him stopped, but he just kept grinding those legs. By the time he was done, he fell in the end zone. What an effort for that young man. Well, the last time Wood tried this, he missed. Wood's kick is up, and that one's good. And that makes the score 21 to 17. Port having it all their way in the second half after North uh, pretty much dominated on the defensive side, Chris. Yes, very much so, Marty. I agree with that. Uh, a lot of talking must have gone on at halftime by the uh, Port Washington coaching staff because they found something on the left side and uh, are working it. And like I said, those are some big boys on that left side for Port Washington, and they're wearing on the Golden Raiders. It's important for North to think about what they've accomplished basically for the first quarter and a half, especially on offense, and get the ball back and drive yourself down the field here and get a score yourself. Brandon Werner leads all rushers for the ball game. He's got 150, Chris in uh, 22 carries. We mentioned he had 84 in the first half. He has 66 so far in the second half, and he hasn't uh, broken any real long ones. He does have one 10-yarder, but most of them are, uh, you know, just four and five yards. Well, I think North's got to go with a little number 20 here. Uh, that first possession, he never touched the ball, so I'm sure they're going to get Santos Medea in a lot of work here. Well, first of all, let's see if we can get the ball to... Uh, Brian Herman on this kickoff return. He had a 92-yarder last week. They got them lined up together, and then they switch back. Yep, and kickoff bounces through. It's going to be taken by pitch on about the 18-13 uh, yard line. Jitterbugging his way up over the 20. But again, good coverage by Port Washington, not allowing pitch to get to the outside. North will have it first and 10. 11.50 remaining in the ball game. The Golden Raiders trail 21 to 17. Ball spotted on the 22. North has mixed it up pretty much on offense between running and passing. They've done mostly running. They gave it, uh, had it three runs in their first, only possession of the third quarter. Could not get a first down. They need to do a little better here. Medina has it through the middle, and he's battling his way up near the 30-yard line, make it about the 29, so a good chunky yardage for Medina that time. I like that play. I like that play a lot. Go back to uh, Medina and found Gutchow and Priggy in the flat there. A lot of that stuff that worked for you in the first half, go back to it. That line worked very well in the first half. Get them working again. Fat pride. Second down and three. Medina, Gutschow in the offset eye. Port almost jumps offside. Fake handoff, Cuts keeps it. He's battling forward. And uh, he's gonna be short of the first down, but gets it up near the 30. Would be a pickup of maybe one. You know, we almost had that offside by Port again. That yep. one interior lineman likes to jump and uh, he's done that several times. They did catch him for offside once, but that's been about it. Kutz picks up a yard. We're gonna make it third down and two. Let me see some of the fans up there. Right. 
Gutchell's the up back. Medina's the deep back. Priggy the tight end on the right side and the flag comes in. That probably means somebody didn't have their mouth guard in. And they're up there talking to uh, Sean McGee. Illegal motion on North, and that's a huge penalty, Chris. Yeah, he went up and down and up back into a stance. Port's obviously going to take this little penalty. That'll push it back to the 25. Makes it third down and seven. Huge difference. And they were basically... Here's the third quarter. I was going to say they're penalty, basically penalty free in the first half, except for a couple. Now they got two possessions, two penalties. Not a good sign. One on the punt, and now this one here. Wide receivers left and right for North. Split backfield this time. Cuts yep. drop straight back. Fires it out right through the hands of Nate Pitch. Made a good effort at it. A little bit high and out of his reach. Goes incomplete. That's going to make it fourth down and seven. You almost got to punt it away here, Coach, and uh, your defense is just going to have to step up. Yep. Maybe a turnover here or something. We're busy. A couple 37 yards here. Dan Baronic back deep. Lone return man for the Port Pirates. Klein makes a nice scoop, gets it away off of a heavy rush, drives Baronic back. He can't make the catch. That's the break. Now he's going to leave it go, and it's going to be downed at about the 26 yard line. Good pressure kick by Eric Klein. The Kleinmeister, as we used to call him at uh, Lincoln Erdman. How about about 48 yards on that? Good job, Eric. Now you got to get a stop. Ball spotted, we're gonna call it the 27. Two possessions, two scores for uh, Port in the first times they've had the ball. Just the third time they've held the ball. North only had a two. You're right, that was a 48 yard punt, the beauty. Just when they needed it most. Well, the line's gotta step up. Inside handoff, fumble. Oh, just about the break they needed. Nothing there. Maybe not. Well, nice I thought stop. Werner had it knocked out of his hands. Instead, he just got knocked down. Right. Picked up of uh, maybe a yard or two. That's the kind of stop you want. Lost a yard, Marty. So he's second and 11. That's easy enough. Yep. One third the way there. Shot there of Andy Eirich, number 70. Clock running at 9-10 remaining in the ball game. North trails it by four, 21 to 17. Luntzer makes a good effort, gets it up over the 30. Called the 32, six yard pickup. It's gonna make a third down and five. Well, Port has thrown the ball once in the first quarter and once on a two point conver conversion. So they haven't thrown the ball much. I wouldn't think they're going to do it here either. Pretty effective though, two for two. Yeah. So. And Luntzer had only one of those. Big third down play, Raiders got to toughen up. It's a tight formation. Hand off to Werner, he picks up good chunky yardage. I think he's going to be just short of the first down. He's going to be very close. Well, they ran. It our way again. Marty. I was going to say, if he is short, it's going to be interesting what uh, Port would do if they'd punt it away or go for it. They're moving the chains. Well, they are giving him the first down. He got it up over the 35, up to the 37. That's just enough for the first down. So a five yard pickup by Brandon Werner. Nets Port the necessary yardage for the first down. Now they decide to move T.J. Ingles back over on this side. Also in the middle is uh, Derek Zuba. Hey, how about motion this time on 
Whistle, Court. too much time. Okay. Court didn't get the play run in the allotted time, so that's gonna be a penalty on them. You know, Marty, I was just thinking, you know, they got that first down, they're looking at the clock, take a little time here. I was just wondering how much time they're gonna wait to get that play called. You know, they don't run too much, uh, not too many brain surgeon calls here because <laughs> they haven't run a complex set of plays. It's basically just, well, just straight line mount. them up and man yep. to man. Yep. You stop us. You haven't stopped us here in the second half. Let's see if you can do it now. Well, yep. North came pretty close, and it's going to be a tough road to hold for uh, Port. It's first and 15. That's what you wanted, too, a penalty. Hand off by Preisler. He breaks off tackle and picks up that five yards before he's hit and dropped. I think that was Brian Herman out there. Uh, check that. Make that Nate Kautzer. Kautzer number 32. Preisler on the carry. Actually picked up six yards. Makes it second down and nine. Again, our next ball game is next Friday night. It's a north-south game. It'll be played right here at Urban Field. Luntzer on the fake handoff. He runs a keeper right up the middle. He's got the first down and more. Kautzer misses him. Pitches the last man. Can he get him? He hog tags him and nails him just inside the 20-yard line, but not before. Johnny Luntzer rips off a big gainer. Well, that's going to be about a 35-yarder, Chris. Well, they had the right situation there. Here you see it on a replay. Just a 42-yard pickup. Good blocking again by the Port Washington Pirates, sealing off those, sealing off those Raiders. Boy, you had a nice situation, first and 15, but... Yeah, they didn't capitalize on it at all. First down on the 20. Luntzer with a 42-yarder. Little inside handoff to the Port running back. That was Werner again. Picks up three yards. Well, Luntzer's only carried the ball twice here in the fourth quarter, but he's got 52 yards. He also ripped off a 36-yarder in the third quarter, so he's uh, piling up the yardage here in the second half. Second down for the Pirates. Werner pounding away at the North defense. Gets it near the 11 before he's pushed back. Making the stop for North was uh, Nick Reschke. Along with uh, Herman and Medina, I think that was. Going to be third down and two. Pick up a five yards that time by Werner. Werner takes it off Nothing. the right side and uh, he's going to be stacked up near the line of scrimmage. See where they mark the forward progress. Hey, Werner's going to sleep good tonight. Wow, he got over to 10 there. I thought there was nothing there. He got a little bit of a push right at the end. I noticed one of the uh, port linemen walking back towards the huddle signaling first down. He could see what we couldn't, that uh, Brandon Werner had a little bit of a nudge right at the end of the run to get him very close to the first down. Yeah, I'll tell you, I thought for sure that he was boggled up there. Well, either way, they're going to be close enough. They'll be going for it on fourth down, that's for sure. They don't have it already. I think Brian showed us there that he's got it. Oh, Just I, short by inch. inches. So we're going to give Warner one yard on that play. You better... All the meat that you have in the blue jerseys, I get out on that field right now and... Strong, hold tight. Fourth down and one, ball spotted just short of the 10 yard line. Port's and a timeout time. by Port Washington and a good time for that timeout. There's 5.35 remaining in a ball game. They're up by four. This is critical for both teams. North gets a stop, they're gonna get possession. Although deep in their own territory, Chris, they got some weapons that can go deep. Yeah, I would, you know, that close in the way they've been 
pushing the Raiders back. You think maybe just a quarterback sneak. You almost don't want to risk going back to a back. I know it sounds back to a back, but hand off to a back. Well, if they make penetration and you nail them in the backfield. Right, so maybe just a quick quarterback sneak. What we need here is a penalty or a turnover. Turnover would be real nice. Something you could pick up and run, run with. Well, might be a good time for a blitz. Now, I haven't followed the uh, North defense that closely. I don't know if you've noticed, Chris. I don't know if they've done much blitzing tonight. But uh, it certainly is an option. They could pull out of the bag. When we uh, attended that South game last week, uh, the Red Wings didn't blitz much, but uh, it seemed like their timing was quite well when they did call the blitz. Yeah, they're fast to the ball, that's for sure, South. I watched that last week. Well, let's set the table for you. It's fourth down and one. North trails 21 to 17. There's 535 remaining in the ball game. Ball is whistled into play. Luntzer's gonna be under center. His money back, Werner's behind him. Hey, Luntzer on the call. keeper and there's a penalty called. There's our motion call. Yes, sir. -y. Good. You wish good a little bit good things that, happen. Coach. Penalty, motion on port. That's gonna push it back. Now it's gonna be fourth down and six. Push the ball back to the 16 yard line. Port has been uh, reluctant to throw the ball. I don't know if you wanna just sell out on the run at this point. I would think they're gonna give it to number one. One time, North's got to have it right here. Luntzer on a keeper, he gets through the tackle spot, he breaks uh -oh. loose and he's into the end zone. Well, he got through the line of scrimmage and then bounced it to the outside and at that point, nobody could catch him. Johnny Luntzer, very quick. And now it's 27 to 17, Port Washington. Wow. I, once again, I thought they had him, but you're right. He just bounced off either uh, his own guys or a North guy, and off he went. Maybe on the replay we'll be able to tell. Woods' kick is up. It looks good, and it is. And that extends the Port Washington lead to 11 now at 528 remaining in the ball game at 28 to 17. about violence, a child learns for life. Teach carefully, we can show you how. Act against violence. Call 877-ACT-WISE for a free brochure. Here you see the replay, Marty. He bounce he... out, yeah, and he just got around the defenders. Those, uh, the two North defenders kind of got tied up inside. And it looked like they had a hand on him, but just couldn't yank him down with his Johnny Luntzer has 94 yards and 12 carries, uh, Chris, with a couple of touchdowns. And uh, he started off in the first half, he had five carries for minus eight yards. So he's uh, really picked it up. You know, it's hard to tell if Port is playing good defense because their offense has just dominated the possession time. North hasn't had much of an opportunity to uh, get their remits on it and move it up the field. That kick goes out of bounds. North will get it on the 40, I believe, is uh, the penalty. And the North, excuse me, the Port Washington coaching staff applauding that that <laughs> penalty. Well, you know, the one thing they've done, they've not allowed Herman a, a punt return, a kickoff return, and he's only made one catch for a touchdown by Medina. So they've uh, really shut him off. They're gonna make him do it again? 
Ooh, I didn't think they liked to do this in high school football. Bob Wood is going to get ready to kick off again. Herman and Pitch back deep. They're going to line up. Well, let's see. They're, they've been in tandem, and then they split right at the end. Herman generally goes to the left side. Well, Wood wants to mark it down on the 40 again and say, get back there. So he puts the ball down at the 35. So far in the second half, Chris North has run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plays. Make it six, because one of those was a penalty. Not much possession time. Port is really dominated and uh, just grinding it out. Wood's kick is right down the middle and pitch again, takes it this time at the 15. He's up to the 20, he has a wall of blockers, squirts through, he's he got the go. sideline, he's got a blocker in front, Herman yeah, makes Hermie. a good block. Pitch down to the 20, he's got one man to beat, he's inside the five and he's thrown down at about the two yard line. Great blocking by the North Raiders on the right side to get pitch the opening down the sideline. Good blocking by Herman to get him down inside to the five. Boy, if one thing North needed was a quick score, and there you have it. A golden opportunity right here. No pun intended with Golden Raiders, but uh, here's a valuable chance here. I like that wall that Coach Tudis does that with the special teams Todd Tudis that is, and that was uh, real nice. Well, you better take us back to live action, Scott, because they're getting ready to run a play. We'll watch that uh, in just a second. But we'll see some great blocking on the right side. Cuts under center, Medina's the deep back. Gutschel is the offset eye man. Hand off off the right side. Medina hammers it into the end zone. Touchdown. Big score and it happened quick. 5'10". As a matter of fact, I don't think that clock even ran off, Chris. I looked at 5'10 when they snapped and it's still at 5'10". At least that's what it looks like. Well, you got to go for two here, Marty. You're down by five points. So you look at the card and obviously <laughs> you got to go says, for two. go for two. <laughs> Maybe I'll explain to our fans what the card is. Anyway, here's that kickoff return. Watch near the bottom of your screen. That's where the, all the blocking is going to happen. I just love this. When they set this wall, they all seal the guys in. Boom, there's a good block. Brian Herman with just an awesome block here. Boom, right there. Tried to get one more. Got a little push, but then he laid off, which was smart too. Didn't pick up the uh, clipping penalty. And the North fans do go bonkers and... All righty, we're going for the two-point conversion. Herman and pitch. Well, Herman's the only wide out out to the right. Medina's the deep back. Again, Gutschel, the offset eye man. Cut sparks the signals. Rolling, passing. Herman with a good catch. And he's knocked down just outside the end zone. Good defensive play by Johnny Lancer, Luncer, number 10. Also assisted by Blake Prager. Oh, man. North's just going to have to score a touchdown, Chris. There's Peter Mitchell throwing his biceps that he has. There's Mark Schneider. Wow. Well, North showing that explosiveness. You got to give him that, but now it boils right back. You got to play some defense. Kick it deep, don't you think? You don't want to do an onside kick, do you? Well, I think that North, no, I think apparently that, Coach Tudis didn't like a feet <laughs> knocked down outside the end zone. I thought it was a great defensive play. Really, what Hermie needs to do is get his get at least one step into the end zone. He cut his uh, pattern off a little bit shallow and uh, never got in. Well, I was going to say, too, uh, I mean, you're going to have to score, you know, to somehow make it even. Of course, a field goal would make it a lot easier, but uh, I don't mind. you got to stop for Washington. Five minutes, still plenty of time if you get a stop to score again, and that's the key is to get the stop, and then... You're gonna score, you're gonna have to score to win. 
Just makes it a little more difficult. It's going to have to be a touchdown now. Eric Klein kicking off. Back deep is Dan Baronic. Nice place there, Eric. Nice place. Go get it. Baronic takes it inside the 20 at the 18 yard line. And you are right. That was a great kick. Kicked it over the uh, first two lines of uh, return men and forced Baronic to uh, get way the heck over there to make the, re the recovery. Yeah, Josh Gilson was coming down here hard too to try to recover that ball, which would have been that north ball. But uh, again, smart play by Port Washington to get to the ball and just pounce on it there. Well, Baronic's a smart player. At least he was on that play. Let's hope he carries that into the classroom. Is there a flag on the field? No, just the uh, T still out there. Just the T was on the field. Yeah, running out to get it is uh, Jake Verant. Jakey, uh, Jefferson grad. Good hustle, Jake. You should have shown that kind of hustle in gym class. <laughs> Actually, he was a good kid. I knew he'd be playing football at North. Good, good little athlete at Jefferson. All right, got to get a stop here. Got all, what, well, you got two timeouts left? I believe they got two left. Lunts are under center. The guy you got to watch is uh, Prager on this play. Not much there. On the carry, Mike Chrysler, pardon me. Good Second stop. down and nine, only one yard on that play. Yeah, I was just gonna say, nice stop there by the defense. One's what you need, one possession stopped. Chrysler has four carries in the second half for 11 yards. Hey, they're trying to do the wave. You right. go, girls. They're doing the wave, but they're doing it alone. Luntzer on the keeper, he sneaks through. Not enough for the first down, but he got it over the 25 yard line. Using David Bishop, number 77, for that white team there. He's a big boy, 290 pounds. He's just knocking those blue shirts around. They're gonna spot it at the 28-yard line, so an eight-yard pickup. It's gonna make a third and one. I can see why they wanna get the ball to uh, Luntzer. That guy can uh, really skate out there and slip by tacklers. Third down. Luntzer again on the keeper, he's through. Streaks through one tackler, and now he's hit and dropped. Helping to make the stop was Andy Eirich, and at the bottom of the pile is uh, Nate Kautzer. But again, Luntzer on a good pickup, makes it first and 10, Port Washington. Ball out over the 40 to the 43. That was a 15 yard pickup. Well, he's definitely up over 100 yards now, Chris. He doesn't look like the same running oh, you know, quarterback he, that he was in the first half. He gets just a little bit of a crease, you know, when he gets those legs up high, he's hard to bring down. A little inside handoff and barreling forward is Brandon Werner. Just running right through the Raiders. Well, that was a little trick play. We haven't seen that one. You know, it's like right. it was gonna be a draw play, but he had given it off to the up back. And that's just enough to freeze some of the uh, yeah. linebackers too, and then they're not in position necessarily to make the initial hit. Gain a six, makes it second down and four. We need a turnover. We'll make that a gain of uh, seven yards on that play, Chris. We gotta get the guys up in the box, which they do. Here he comes again, same place. And he's down at about the 45, which is enough for another first down. They're getting, what Port is doing, they, they get off the ball pretty quick and they get that initial block. And then the Werner and, and Luntzer is pretty elusive. Werner's more of a power back. But you know, they by the time the help comes, it's too late. You know, you got yeah. your four or five yards, six yards sometimes. Absolutely, and that's all it takes. We're down to 240 and counting. North trailing by five, it's 28 to 23. A turnover, turnover would look real nice right now. And if we don't get a turnover, let's get a penalty on port. Too much time again, maybe. 
Uh, that would come from the back guy. Yeah. I think what they got is north offside, actually. Oh, it's oh, Port, Port Washington offside. offside. Yeah, I think their uh, outside tackle there was, was the guy. He's going to make it first and 15. Move well, the ball back to the 50-yard line. Now North had this situation earlier in the half, and uh, they were not able to capitalize on it. Well, you're going to have to now, Marty. One more first down, and this, this game is basically over. There's 2.34 left. You can use your timeouts. I think you have two left. But uh, this is the... Uh, 15 yards that your D's got to stop them. Well, and also, you know, you can get fairly good field position, too, if you can stop them out here. Luntzer following his up back, and uh, scampers through all it over the 45, down to the 44. And I believe that was uh, Mike Preissler leading, the, leading Luntzer through the line. Picked up a good block. Gain of six. Second down and nine. Well, and this play's already up under two. If you get a stop here, they're going to be calling timeout, I think, right here. North almost offside lining up. T.J. Engels just nudging back. And another big gain up the middle by Port. And uh, their offensive line is just uh, dominating here in the second half. Timeout by North. Werner on the carry again. I believe that was North's second time out, Chris. Yep. And this has got to be it right here. It's going to be third down and four. Werner with another five-yard pickup. Got to get a stop. There's just no two ways about it because if you don't get a stop here, and basically take a knee and this game will be over. You've mentioned uh, occasionally about this big Bishop kid on the offensive line. They've been running quite a bit behind him. and That's the other one, Jake Effinger. He's been doing a job over here too. Uh, one of the things I know when we were stopped over by the pub after the game last week, they mentioned about the uh, Raider line not being particularly big but quick. Well, here might be a case where Small and quick is not uh, overpowering the big guys. Right, and the big guys are, are doing the, the job here. Well, North's got some meat out there now, and big number 76, Jason Diener, 6'5", 250 pounds. A well, big third down play. North is going to have to stop him twice. 147 remaining in the ball game. North trails at 25-23, and a blitz coming. Medina runs right by Luntzer, and he's going to be uh, close to the first down. I think they're going to mark him at about the 36-yard line. It'll be fourth down. You better be calling timeout here. Better be calling timeout here. Luntzer picked up three yards, fourth and one. Clock is running, 115. Makes you wonder if North has a timeout remaining. Yeah, they do. They gotta get it right here. Medina came the last time, they got the two linebackers right up on the line of scrimmage, yes. and Luntzer's in the backfield, and stopped. Santos Medina. That a the last two plays, you could definitely see the blitz coming, and they sprung a leak. Port did, and North nailed them. We got 104 left. It's 28-23. Port on top. Luntzer losing yardage. North is going to have it first and 10. Just wanted a chance. That's all you wanted, and you got a chance now with a minute. Ball on the 38. Loss of two by Luntzer on that last play. Brian Herman's had one-on-one -on -one coverage all day. They're Pitches. really backing up on him, though. Pitch and Herman, two wideouts. Motion oh. on oh, the pitch. Oh, mix up between the center and his quarterback because everybody was moving <laughs> except, the, <laughs> except the center and the, and the middle lineman. Well, now's not the time to get excited here. It didn't work, so we still got the ball. It's just five yards farther. It's not. Well, <laughs> You, you, you're, not, you're upset about the situation, but I'm just saying you can't. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. You gotta get a whole lot of yards right. anyway. That's right. It's not like you're gonna be, you know, chipping down the field with a minute four. You're gonna have to go down the field a little bit. Yeah, so 
Get First back little, on track. You know, it'd be kind of nice. Run a little clear out, run Hermie underneath, and uh, let him do his thing yep. after the catch. They're really playing back, though, now, those safety. That's Yeah, he's 15 yards back. 5, 10, yep, 15. And the cornerbacks are a good 10 yards off. Bad snap. Kutz picks it up. Can't avoid the lost tackler, the and then he lost the ball, and Port has it. Making the recovery for the Port Pirates was David Larson. Bad snap out of the shotgun. And North turns it over, and I smell a couple of running plays by Port. They have the ball inside the 15-yard line. Call it the 14. At a full house backfield, Werner, the middleman. Luncer takes a knee. That sets the clock in motion with 50 seconds and counting. One more play ought to do it, coach. North gave him a good effort, but uh, Port. Uh, really found their offense in the second half. Definitely uh, just wore down that uh, defense. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, North really got, really never got the offense in gear in the second half. It wouldn't have been for that long return. They wouldn't have had any scores. That's true. And Good job by the Port Washington line there. And Warner really found themselves. And what a complete difference than the second half. I mean, you got to give credit to Port Washington, not necessarily what North didn't do because Port just went to work. And that's the ball game. Port Washington, after trailing at halftime, comes back to score 21 points in the second half and uh, take the ball game by a score of 28 to 23. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the uh, final stats and comments about tonight's ball game. start hallucinating after three days. Start scratching yourself so bad that you'll develop scabs on your arms. Your teeth will fall out, your eyes will turn yellow. You'll develop liver problems, but you'll regret it. You'll end up in jail, you'll end up in rehab, or you'll end up dead. And there ain't nothing else to say about it. Sheboygan is alive with, with artistic expression. expression. Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra. Lakeshore Chorale. Distinguished Guest Series. University Theater. John Michael Kohler Art Center. Sheboygan Concert Association. Sheboygan Theater Company. Lakeland Fine Arts Series. Stephanie H. Weil Center. Theater for Young Audiences. Rotary Concert Series. Sheboygan Pops Concert Band. Give the new Performing Arts Gift Certificate available at the Chamber of Commerce office. Not long ago, Albert couldn't take long walks. He was diagnosed with a bad heart. After considering all the treatment options, his heart specialist recommended a pacemaker instead of putting him to sleep. Get the facts about animal research. There's a new experience around every corner as you discover Wisconsin. Discover Wisconsin like you've never seen before. sandwiches for a sleepover, staying for the curtain call at the talent show, or learning the names of their favorite bands. 
Believe it or not, right now, there are parents just like you out there talking about things like this. From school to home, from friends to futures. And we'd like you to be a part of it. National PTA. Every child, one voice. All right, we're back. We're uh, the Port Washington uh, Pirates came from a 17 to 6 halftime deficit to beat Sheboygan North 28 to 23 and just dominated the football in the second half, not allowing North much possession time. Uh, the big key in the second half for Port was uh, the running backs, Brandon Werner and quarterback Johnny Lunsford. Yeah, I thought Johnny Lunsford didn't show us much in the first half, but holy cow, when he got through the holes and took off in the second half, he was a completely different person than I thought in the, in the start of the game. Uh, Brandon Werner just kind of worked behind that big offensive line of Port Washington and just weared on the Sheboygan North. And again, uh, just dominated the uh, the play there. And North had a chance late, but a turnover, you know, happened. But that, you know, didn't, you know, who's going to say that, that would, they would have scored anyway? So you can't blame that turnover that, that they lost the game. Well, you, you mentioned it too. The, the D-backs for Port in that last possession for North were way back. Uh, trying to prevent anything long. North would have had to probably go short and hope for some uh, good running. But uh, we talked about Brandon Werner quite a bit. He had a heck of a nice game. He's going to sleep well tonight, Chris. 29 carries, 183 yards, and three touchdowns. Now, to he tomorrow he may not take an afternoon nap because he'll be so sore when he's watching the Badger game. But I like the way he runs with those, those legs. A little bit unorthodox in the way you coach or teach, but that's a very effective. I mentioned earlier in the, in the in, or later in the second half, it's hard to tell if Port had a really good defense because their offense was so dominant. But what it did do is it limited Norris' possession time, not letting them get into much of a running game. Right, Santos Medina had 100 yards in the first half, and you know the best way to keep keep it out of uh, Santos Medina and Brian Herman's hands is keep the ball, and and that's what they did. Our next ball game is going to be next Friday when uh, Sheboygan South invades North here at uh, Urban Field. TV8, of course, will be here doing that game. For the crew behind that camera is Brian Andrews up on top as he's Sato Hemi from Japan. Uh, Scott Miloff spinning the dials in the truck. Steve Reinert helped us out uh, with some technical issues early on. My partner, Chris Wright. My name is Mike Martin saying so long, everybody. We'll see you down the road. <laughs>